Yes, and welcome back on the touchline on Y254 and of course into our segment, interview segment and pleased to have members of the Kenya Ice Lions, this is the national men's ice hockey team who are gracing our studios today and I'm pleased to introduce them, Robert Opio on my uh, right, where he's a player and also the chairman of uh, the federation, then Benjamin Buru at the center, a uh, player for the ice hockey team right and also Arnold Mburu on my far right Karibuni San on Y254 yes I mean uh, up to this particular moment maybe I'll begin with you Arnold yeah. how does it feel for you to turn out for the Ice Lions uh, thank you very much uh, it's been a very thrilling experience I'm glad to be part of the Ice Lions and to represent Kenya on a bigger scale mm -hmm. yeah. yes and for Benjamin well uh, thank you it, it's a privilege to be among the pioneers of ice hockey in Kenya, to be among the first people playing the sport and promoting the sport, and it's an honor to be here. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, um, uh, and I mean, uh, Robert, right? Yes. For you, you're the chairman, and it's like the pioneer team. I mean, nothing is ever clear for the pioneers, right? It is never easy. It's always a process and a journey, mm -hmm. and we are still learning a lot mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And among the things that maybe are showing that the game is holding promise and maybe things are opening up is the recent move by the International Ice Hockey Federation to co-opt Kenya or recognize Kenya. What does this particular stance mean for the game back here in Kenya? So being recognized by the International Ice Hockey Federation, it means several doors are being opened for us. Mm -hmm. For example, that means we'll be having support that will be coming in. That means we can be able to develop the sport a lot more. Mm -hmm. Particularly right now, our main focus is with the youth programs. And also we are hoping to be able to develop the women's team. Mm -hmm. So on top of that, now when we reach out, let's say, to the ministry or to the Olympics committee, mm -hmm. we're able to say that we are recognized by an International Ice Hockey Federation. Mm -hmm. So there are so many opportunities that Will be coming with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Benjamin, do you see the opportunities? Yeah. Well, looking maybe uh, when you began and how did you begin? How did you take on ice when you know we are on the other side of the world where there's no ice? Yeah, I started by field hockey, then mm -hmm. I played inline hockey, uh -huh. then transitioned to ice hockey, mm -hmm. and being recognized by WHS, WHF, uh -huh. there has been some growth in mm -hmm. the recent years. Mm -hmm. The numbers have increased, mm -hmm. that is, the seniors, we have ladies joining. Mm -hmm and we have a very robust youth program. And being recognized by WHF means we get to take part in bigger tournaments, mm -hmm. which, and then hockey development will be more improved and more growth coming and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Was it easy for you to take on ice hockey? With the determination, I'd say it's easy. It's challenging a bit, but if you put your mind to it and you set out to go get it, mm -hmm. you can always do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arnold? Was it, uh, was it easy for you to choose on it and how maybe you began as a hockey player? Uh, it was fairly easy. Uh -huh. With determination, you can do everything. But also the right support from players because it has grown into like part of my family. Mm -hmm. So with support from everyone, you can do well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And um, for Robert, I mean, it, there are a whole lot of... Um, things that must happen for this particular game, maybe to get to a point where, according to the vision of the Federation, also how you want it to go, right? And maybe, are there, you can talk about the recent development, talk about the leagues, are there enough uh, league, maybe enough teams to participate in leagues so that you have a large pool where to draw the talent from? So right now where we are, uh, we do have two teams that have been created mm -hmm. for the main team, the Ice Lions, and through those teams, we are, we are also looking at how will we be able to take the youth who are still playing. Mm -hmm. So we have youth, we have intermediate players, sometimes they get seeded up. Mm -hmm. um, but development of the game, we will look at introducing more players over time, developing the process as it is. Mm -hmm. um, we have started our small league within, mm -hmm. but also we are part of something called the Friendship League. It's a bit of a sports tourism thing, whereby mm -hmm. they travel around the world. Mm -hmm. And so right now we are still in the early stages, we are still improving our development. Mm -hmm. and every day is a learning moment we work as a team and we make sure that everything works out mm -hmm. and now how do you get it to the next step so for the next step where we are right now it's going to be 
I'd say next step right now it's looking at how we are going to make sure that that youth program is going to be turning out quality players. Mm -hmm. um, slowly by slowly, we do have tournaments that are happening regularly within the senior teams. Mm -hmm. We play with expatriate mm -hmm. uh, members here locally. Mm -hmm. And we, we believe that over time, it mm -hmm. may take a bit of a while to get to the Olympics, but we are taking those steps to get there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and for um, uh, Benjamin and Arnold, you were, you, of course, you do turn out for the national team, so that means that you've taken uh, part in a number of uh, tournaments, you know. And for you, uh, for Benjamin, you were in USA for the Dream Nations Cup. How, real, how crucial was this, understanding that you're the only one who went for this particular tournament? How relevant was it for you? And now, how does it help you become a better player? And also maybe sharing that particular knowledge with the rest of the team. Uh, sorry, but Rob is the one who went uh -huh. to the Dream Nations. Mm -hmm. I was in South Africa mm -hmm. for the tournament mm -hmm. in August, which we won. Mm -hmm. And it was quite an eye-opening experience mm -hmm. for myself and other players because mm -hmm. we got more competition, mm -hmm. more skilled level players, and mm -hmm. we realized we have a lot to work on. Mm -hmm. And that is the goal now that we're home. Get the hockey program going on well, mm -hmm. get more players in, get more hockey development in it, and eventually keep winning tournaments and more games mm -hmm. as we head to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And Arnold, maybe, uh, do you see the Olympic dream getting closer in late 2028? Uh, yeah, because everyone is very determined. The, as I mentioned before, it's a team sport and mm -hmm. everyone has to do their own part. Mm -hmm. So I think together we may see it coming into fruition. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, um, Robert, the, I mean, we only have coach Timothy, I think, who will be coming in uh, later on. Right, as the coach who been with the team probably from 2015, right? Yeah. Uh, how important has he been to the team and maybe the plans to train more, uh, have more coaches with more teams, I mean, with ones, more coaches and more officials? Okay, so with sports, something that people tend to see most of the time is the players who are in front of the scene, but mm -hmm. they don't realize there's a lot that actually goes on behind the scenes. So he's been with us for quite a while. He's been an inspiration and also a guidance, an advisor to the federation and to the players. Mm -hmm. uh, we do look up to him and every single day it's a learning moment. Mm -hmm. Um, we sometimes falter, we make mistakes, but he's always there to correct us. Mm -hmm. Something common is Canadian coaches are known to be quite strict and he, ins he instills discipline into us quite mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And maybe has Kenya gotten support from ice playing nations? Yes, we have received support from quite a number of nations over the period that we've been playing. Uh, for example, during the COVID period, the Hungarian embassy, they offered us an opportunity to be coached by one of the Hungarian coaches. Um, the ice rink was closed at the time uh, at Panari, um, but we had some off-ice moments that we were able to practice, just get the skills back into us. Um, we've had several other nations, the um, US, Canada, Sweden, Finland, um, sometimes they bring in also some of their uh, expatriate members from the embassy. They come, they play with us. They are usually informed. If you're into ice hockey, you can go to the Panari Hotel whereby they usually play hockey. And when some of these people, they leave, they also leave us with some of the equipment. Mm -hmm. Because getting equipment into Kenya, it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so them leaving it behind for us, that means a player who, chances they won't have equipment, mm -hmm. they will have something that they can utilize. Mm -hmm. And I mean, um uh, Benjamin, maybe uh, for you, participating in this particular sport where sometimes uh, the players have to maybe uh, take care of themselves, you know, sometimes you have to pay for the rink as well and pay transport. I mean, what makes you going? Uh, what keeps me going as a player is mm -hmm. the love for the game. Mm -hmm. Once you start playing ice hockey, I'd say it's very addictive. It's very, it's a muse. It's mm -hmm. something you want to do every day, every mm -hmm. moment. And that cuts across all the players. That's why it gets easier going back into your pocket or sacrificing time mm -hmm. to be on the ice and mm -hmm. use your finances or get finances to be on the ice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe for Arnold, for the player who yeah. you're playing it here, you have to access the rink, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like a natural thing, how it is elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, how hard must you work to be better on the global stage? To be better on the global stage, uh, okay, it requires, okay, I'd say it requires first of all, focus and also determination. Because mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not every day that you'll find ice and players on, in Kenya doing mm -hmm. ice hockey. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, 
it's a very niche sport that you need to self motivate for you to get there yeah mm -hmm. yes and maybe having started you have to play on the surf yeah, i mean i saw um some of your trainings on the tough surface that the just behind the aga can work right the aga can work yeah. um, um it, how how is this i mean when you get to the does it does it make you maybe better when you get to the eyes now the well, best person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it just, <laughs> well, ice hockey and inline hockey yeah. are more or less the <laughs> same. It's just <laughs> the surface that changes. Mm -hmm. The stick work remains the mm -hmm. same, the positioning, the technicality. Mm -hmm. So if you do inline hockey, then mm -hmm. it's easier to transition into mm -hmm. ice hockey, mm -hmm. which is what majority of our players have done, and that's why they are as good as they are right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and uh, for uh, Robert now, you see, uh, with, um, with, with uh, the game just showing signs of, you know, becoming maybe one of the popular sports in the country, but also looking at how other African African countries, just five of them playing, what does it mean? So some of these countries, they have helped us. They have been inspirational in terms of um, you guys, we are seeing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. We want to help you um, mm -hmm. get to where you are. Mm -hmm. And one of the dreams that all of the ice hockey playing countries in Africa, mm -hmm. so we've got Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, mm -hmm. um, Morocco, and South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we are hoping to have an African Cup for the mm -hmm. first time ever mm -hmm. um, in June of next year. Mm -hmm. So we are still in discussions. We're still trying to figure out how to make it happen, how mm -hmm. to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, and the IHF also, they have said that, okay, we hear what you're doing and we are interested to see how it will work out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we are still, more or less, we are all uh, small developing uh, countries, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that people realize that it's not just an American or a European sport, mm -hmm. but Africans also mm -hmm. are into it, and there are people who can play it. Mm -hmm. how, how hard do you have, must you work to demystify that? that? Very, very hard. <laughs> um, demystifying it, even sometimes people say, we have ice in Kenya, maybe in your freezer, maybe in Mount Kenya. But <laughs> in reality, um, the Panari Hotel, they, have, they took in the effort to establish a rink. Yeah, it's a small rink, sure, yeah. but it does the job for us. Uh -huh. And that is where everybody starts. Uh -huh. You can't go and, let's say, you jump straight into driving a very big, expensive car until uh -huh. you start very small. Uh -huh. And that's where we are. This really presents a challenge if you want to spread it uh, beyond Nairobi? Yes, it, we do hope that at some point it will spread past Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, for now, we start off with Panari and we see how life will go. Mm -hmm. I mean, and for the tournament that um, uh, Benjamin, you've taken part in, how crucial will it be for you now? You know, I know you were in South Africa with the Friendship League, you know, the, the two of you. I mean, how, how crucial is this now heading into the forthcoming event? Now, uh, one, ISOC is there hardest team sport in the world. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot of work mm -hmm. to put in and mm -hmm. having played out there on big ice, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lot different than our small ice. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, mm -hmm. there's a lot of work we need to put in, mm -hmm. in terms of the players, the development, mm -hmm. the discipline, mm -hmm. and all the energy that's needed for the game. Mm -hmm. But the future is looking very bright mm -hmm. and everyone is pushing these cuts in their direction. Mm -hmm. and we look forward to good things ahead. Uh, for the rest of the African teams that um, are maybe playing, what I mean, looking at the players and how they were ob organized or running their stuff, how closer, how, how would you compare it? Well, on a scale of 1 to 10, we are, compared to the others, we are at a 7. Mm -hmm. Our biggest rival right now would be Algeria. Mm -hmm. They have very good players, but by then, by the time we get to, to play them, we mm -hmm. will train and practice and wish, we hope, sure mm -hmm. hope to be mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Arnold, for you? Uh, having taken part in these tournaments and uh, being in this particular team that uh, has a lot to do, has mm -hmm. to work so hard. Uh, it's going to be challenging, but with the right guidance from my teammates here, mm -hmm. I'm sure we can do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, Robert, now play up next, we have a number of um, events coming up. But the, this particular one that has really gotten my eye, that's the Friendship League, which is uh, linked with sports tourism. Is it coming to Kenya? And how important is this for, especially for uh, the exhibition of the talents that we have and also for the growth of the game? Yeah, so with the Friendship League, it's an annual sports tourism opportunity whereby um, 
a number of people they are invited by the French League to come in to play um, and also to get to see Kenya as it is. Mm -hmm. So we had the last game we had was last month, whereby mm -hmm. we went to, we went to South Africa, a number of the Kenyan players, mm -hmm. and we did win the trophy. We brought home a trophy mm -hmm. as the Kenyan ice hockey team. And the next game that's coming up, it's going to be in January. Mm -hmm. And so people from all over the world, they're invited. You can um, just pay, come. Not only do you play, mm -hmm. you also get to walk around and see Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a way that also they've helped to expose um, Kenyan ice hockey to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. um, because the Friendship League are also the ones who help us to sell these jerseys internationally. Mm -hmm. And also they've helped us to start selling them here locally together with other merchandises. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's also part of your earning revenue for the team? Yes, it is one of the ways that we do earn revenue. Mm -hmm. um, a portion of the proceeds they go to paying for the ice time mm -hmm. for the for the team, as well as a bit of administrative work. Mm -hmm. um, and we are we are hoping that eventually over time that we'll be able to have more ways to be able to raise the revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe sometimes when the team has to uh, go to these international tournaments and there are maybe a couple of um, I'll say factors that maybe prevent that. How, how, how do you make sure that the team still remains in, you know, like united and those maybe one or two players who go out there have to come back and, and, and have an impact to the rest of the squad? Yeah, that's something that we're, we're still working on. Um, as you know, a team is made of diverse personalities, different mm -hmm. people, different um, personas that they have. Um, but we are trying as hard as possible to make sure that we all realize we are in this together. Mm -hmm. We started off with equipment that, let's say, they had so many holes. Mm -hmm. Right now we have equipment that have been donated mm -hmm. um, and that we're able to play them with them quite well. Uh, a case example with the Friendship League, um, uh, they did sponsor a number of our trips. Mm -hmm. For example, Benjamin going to Japan, the trip we went to South Africa, and the one that I went to New York. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of the ways that we hope going out there, we get that exposure, we come back home, mm -hmm. and we let the rest of the team know mm -hmm. that this is what we learned, and we start putting, putting it into practice. Mm -hmm. And just as we uh, come to the end of this particular first session, um, the Friendship League is what's coming up in, in August, right? The Africa Cup, uh, when do you expect to have it next year? Uh, so Friendship League in mm -hmm. January, mm -hmm. Africa Cup, mm -hmm. that is going to be in... Uh, in June, June next year, mm -hmm. we're hoping. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the uh, Madaraka Day that will be coming up, mm -hmm. as well as Mashuja Day Cup that mm -hmm. will be coming up uh, mm -hmm. this Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'll be there ah, yes. on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to seeing you. Yeah, for real. Also, like, I'll be in the Mesura 2, in the 20th, I see a free. I see a free. And uh, Benjamin, now what yeah. holds next? The Olympic dream. Are you dreaming about it? Yes, I'm dreaming mm -hmm. about the mm -hmm. Olympics. Mm -hmm. I want to see Kenya in the Winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sabrina is there doing us proud. Mm -hmm. We also want to be there and mm -hmm. doing us proud and mm -hmm. making an impact on the sport. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arnold, how important will it be for, to your story if you make it to the Olympics in 2028? Very crucial because when I joined hockey, I found uh, them already having that dream. So me coming in, I feel like I'm here to support that dream mm -hmm. and it's going to be very satisfying to see it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the road is not paved either, but Robert, what's your assurance that uh, the Olympic dream, uh, people should keep dreaming? Uh, people should keep dreaming. I remember 2018, we, uh, I, myself and a number of other players, we had the chance to go to the Winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, we were in the same room with Jack Ma mm -hmm. and Thomas Buck, the IOC president. Yeah. And he'll be coming to Kenya. Uh, you have a word for him? Uh, we said that on twenty fourth of this month. Twenty fourth yes. of this month. Yes. Yeah. So, Mr. Buck, when we were there in South Korea, mm -hmm. I remember that there were talks of let's hope to see Kenyan, uh, the Kenyan team or other developing mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. coming to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing our best. If you look at where we started to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. We're already in the double IHF, uh, or we are making full progress to get uh, to become full members of the double IHF. Mm -hmm. So we hope to make it to the Olympics eventually. Yes, indeed, and also grow the game locally, increase the number of teams, right? Yes. Uh, could be a large pool of talent to pick from. Exactly. Yeah, more Benjamins, more of Benjamins, man. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much thank for gracing the touchline, right? Thank you Up so much. Up next is uh, the coach, uh, Timothy Kobe, who will be, uh, will be interviewing and knowing him uh, more, much more about shedding more light about uh, the ice hockey in Kenya and how he began coaching the Lions that have been roaring and they all 
dreaming of con bring back the conquering the Africa continent next year in the Af inaugural Africa Cup of Nations and also a forthcoming championship. We wish you all the best, gentlemen. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you so much. much. Uh, Sante Sana, yeah. that's uh, the Kenya Ice Lions, uh, the men's national ice hockey team, on the first session of our interviews. Up next, Timothy Kobe, the head coach of uh, the Ice Lions. Uh, stay with us on the touchline.